I'm James Donnelly from the Adelaide and Mount Lofty Ranges Natural Resources Management Board. Today we're here to highlight some of the problems associated with Cape Tulip. Introduced as a garden plant from South Africa, Cape Tulip is a declared weed that can be found on roadsides, in pastures and bushland in the Mount Lofty Ranges. It is poisonous to all types of grazing animals when eaten and for this reason poses significant risk to landholders throughout southern Australia. People are prohibited from moving or selling Cape Tulip and have a legal responsibility to control it on their properties. All parts of the plant are toxic. The poison can cause serious animal health problems such as loss of appetite, weakness, blindness, scouring, stiffness or paralysis of the hind legs and in extreme cases even death. About a kilogram of fresh leaf material is enough to cause death overnight and the plant remains toxic even when dry so contaminated hay can also be a problem. Every landholder needs to be aware of the legal ramifications of selling or moving contaminated hay as well as the consequences for the unsuspecting buyer. Although stock can learn to avoid Cape Tulip in the paddock, this allows it to grow, spread and dominate the pasture, resulting in desirable pasture species being replaced by Cape Tulip, which further decreases the stock carrying capacity. Cape Tulips are spread through infested fodder, soil or machinery. Hay or silage cut from infested paddocks is probably the most common method of dispersal. Seeds and corms will adhere to wool and the feet of animals and seeds are still viable after passing through stock. Dried plants are also spread by wind and running water. Movement of gravel for road making from infested areas can also spread corms and seeds. It is therefore important to keep your property free of Cape Tulip and make sure you control any new infestations before they become established. And here we can see a good example of two leaf cap tulip. The colour of the flowers range from pink, yellow to salmon. A distinctive feature of these plants is the aerial corms shown here on the stem. They can spread easily and lay dormant for up to seven years in the soil before sprouting into a new plant. Corms or bulbs germinate after the autumn rains and Cape Tulip grows quickly through winter. The successful control of Cape Tulip depends on several factors. Firstly, it's important to get the timing right as there is a small window of opportunity for control before the plant dies off in summer. Secondly, as with all weed control, it's important to work on the small patches first before they become large infestations. And thirdly, forms that have a high dormancy. This means they can remain in the soil for many years until germination. So herbicide treatments will need to be applied over several seasons before any significant reduction is noticed. Controlling Cape Tulip manually is difficult due to the many cormels that are formed. For the odd plant or small patches, it is possible to carefully grub the plant, making sure the entire root system and all cormels are extracted and then burnt or dried out. Slashing and mowing Cape Tulip is ineffective and may help increase the spread by dispersing cormels. For small infestations of Cape Tulip, wipe chemical on the leaves using tongs such as these. Start from the bottom, wipe out to the tip and back again. Remember to reapply chemical to the sponges regularly so they remain effective. In situations where it's not practical to grub out or hand wipe cape tulip, foliar spraying with a knapsack like this or boom spraying is a common method. For widespread infestations, it is recommended that landholders boom spray patches using a selective herbicide. This may damage clovers and other legumes, but will leave pasture grass unaffected. Herbicide can also be applied in farming situations by using a blanket or wick wiper. The blanket 
or rope suspended above the ground and saturated with herbicide. As the boom travels across the paddock, taller weeds such as Cape Tulip are wiped with herbicide and the pasture grass remains unaffected. As a control guide, treatments should be applied from early emergence to September, as this is the stage of bulb exhaustion and control will be most effective.